Hey guys, I want to do one more video today while I'm thinking about it, more on end times prophecy. And I hope this hopefully short video will tie in the last couple of videos that I've done and, and just give um, whoever watches it some uh, meat to chew on about end times and, and some thoughts about um, the timing of uh, these events. So this video revolves around Revelation uh, 6, 12, where it says, And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And, you know, this is a key event on uh, the timing of the coming of the Lord, the second advent of Jesus Christ. And as I mentioned in a couple other videos, this is seen a lot in prophecy, a lot in the Bible, uh, Old Testament and New Testament. And, you know, I may do a whole video um, just about this and look at all the verses uh, that discuss this. Um, but in this video, what I want to do is try to tie in um, some things we talked about with Balaam's prophecy and the star out of Jacob and the timing of that, how long uh, people saw that. And as I briefly mentioned at the end of that video, when the sun and moon are darkened, is there going to be a time period where um, people of that generation of the end times will uh, see this uh, sign in the heavens? And so let me go back to... Um, Matthew 2 and read Matthew uh, 2 verses 1 and 2 um, or we can go just verse 2 and these are the wise men that are speaking and, and it says saying where is he that is born king of the Jews for we have seen his star in the east and are coming to worship him and as I mentioned in um, the video on the prophecy of Balaam I always wondered why the wise men uh, referred to it as his star, you know, and that they were looking for the sign. And, and that led me to um, looking at the Balaam prophecy, the star out of Jacob, and that um, the wise men of the East knew this prophecy, you know, as it was passed down from generation to generation after uh, the Babylonian captivity in that area um, that, these uh, scriptures, this prophecy uh, was known to a lot of people. Um, and, and it goes on, though, where um, King Herod uh, was troubled after hearing uh, that the wise man had seen this star in the east and, and what it stood for. Um, and so King Herod in verse 7 it says, Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise man, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared and then we go to Matthew 2 verse 16 where it says then Herod when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men so this is after the wise men had left um, and uh, followed the star uh, to Bethlehem Ephratah um, and worshipped uh, Jesus as a young boy there giving offerings of frankincense uh, gold and myrrh uh, that a vision came to them, a dream. They did not go back to Herod to report to him, uh, but um, uh, went back home. Um, so when Herod, when he saw that he was mocked, the wise man was exceeding wrath, he, and he sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and all the coast thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. So you can see that the reason that Herod killed um, children two years and under in that area of Bethlehem was because that was what um, the wise man reported to him, that they had seen the star for two years. Um, so how does this tie in possibly to end times events? And again, you know, I think that um, the, the sun... Uh, become blackened and the moon became as blood is a key sign um, and there's going to be a time when um, people of the end times of that generation will see this as a literal uh, occurrence and that is going to be a 
uh, harbinger of um, Jesus Christ's second coming within um, a short period of time afterwards, but how long specifically? And so before I go any further, um, again, I look at um, the rapture in a post-tribulation uh, time frame. And the last video that I talked um, on um, end times prophecy using uh, the fall of Jericho um, gave a little bit of a summary. I think that uh, the seven trumpet judgments occurred during the tribulation and then the last trumpet um, occurs when Jesus Christ comes. Um, believers who are still alive are raptured and the seven vile judgments soon thereafter happen on the unbelievers. Um, but if we look at um, if we look at Revelation uh, six twelve again, and we continue that um, at the end, you know, it describes uh, people that are still on earth that are looking up into the heavens after this um, sign of the sun and moon occur, and it says in verse sixteen and seventeen of Revelation 6, and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Um, you know, so a lot of people will look at the seven seals and then look at this as the first part of um, tribulous times. And then the seven trumpets follow this, and then the seven vials uh, either happen concurrently with the seven trumpets or happen after the seven trumpets. Um, you know, I kind of look at this as the seven seals that John uh, has a vision is an individual overall vision of the tribulation times, the seven years. Um, almost like a general overview and more of a social uh, type of vision. What is going on uh, in the earth um, from a social we welfare type um, uh, vision where, um, you know, there's wars happening, there's pestilence, there's famine, uh, food prices are skyrocketing, and there's persecution, persecution. Um, uh, believers in Jesus Christ uh, throughout. Um, but then when that uh, sixth seal opens, um, I think that's the end, uh, getting close to it. Um, at least we're in the second half of that um, tribulation time. So where exactly are we? And, you know, again, um, I look at um, the seven trumpets occurring within the time of the seven seals. I think these are separate um, visions that John is revealing, um, that he's describing uh, one after the other, but they're happening concurrently. Uh, you know, we look in after chapter six of Revelation, first verse of Revelation seven, it says, and after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, uh, and it goes on from there, you know, I think many people will look at this and, and when it says, and after these things that the seals have occurred and then after the seals have finished, then the seven trumpets happen. But, you know, the seventh seal hadn't been opened at this time uh, in Revelation 7-1. That's not until uh, chapter 8 in Revelation. So when I think John... When he says after these things uh, here, I don't think he's necessarily looking at it chronologically, but that he had had a vision of the seven seals of the seven year tribulation time period and what's occurring from a social standpoint. And then after these things of his vision, then he begins to relate um, another vision that he's having of this same timeline going along these same events and not something that happens necessarily afterwards. Um, you know, and so with that thought in mind, let's look at Revelation uh, 8 verses 12 and 13. And this is 
the time of the fourth trumpet, when the fourth angel comes with the fourth trumpet. And it says in verse 12, And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the mists of heaven, saying with a loud voice, voice, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. So we see something happening to the sun, moon, and stars at this time period of the fourth trumpet. Uh, I think this is within the time of the tribulation. I think that believers and unbelievers are going to both be experiencing um, this. And this is before the last trump and the coming of the Lord and the rapture. So let's go on to Revelation 9. And this is the first woe and the fifth trumpet. And this is the uh, locusts that come upon the earth from the bottomless pit. But from a timing stance, standpoint, it says in Revelation 9, 5, And to them it was given that they should not kill them. And this is talking about the locusts. Um, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. So this is talking about um, the torment that these... Uh, supernatural creatures from the bottomless pit uh, come up at this time and are um, causing um, torment to unbelievers. Now, as I talked about in the previous video, um, that uh, believers in Christ are sealed at this time. It says uh, right before that in verse 4 that um, that these locusts would not hurt the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. I think, again, this is a spiritual um, mark. I think there's going to be people that are believers that have the seal of God. Uh, I think there's going to be uh, unbelievers that um, have not gone to the way of the beast system and taken the spiritual mark of the beast yet, uh, who have time to uh, turn from unbelief to belief in Jesus Christ. And I think this is what this time period is really um, all about, is to, um, you know, as, as this world, as we know it, wraps up, um, you know, this is going to separate the sheep from the goats. Um, and there, again, will be... Um, probably a small group of people that have taken the mark of the beast that, um, you know, um, are still alive, but have no, uh, hope of turning to Jesus Christ for whatever reason, their hearts have hardened to the point where they've crossed that spiritual line in the sand. Uh, and no matter what they see, um, and no matter what events occur, uh, and the gospel being preached that they, uh, will continue in unbelief. Um, you know, so this happens again um, after the fourth trumpet when we begin to see uh, these supernatural events occur with the sun, moon, and stars uh, in this last five months. So let's go to Revelation 9 and pick it up in verse 13. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden al altar, which is before God. Um, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. So we can see woe number one, which is the fifth trumpet last five months. Woe number two, before the final woe in the last trump, lasts for 13 months in a day or so. Um, so this is, you know, putting trumpets five and six together. It's about a year and a half, a little bit over a year and a half, um, 18 months. So what I want to, um, you know, speculate on, and this is pure speculation, but what I want to speculate on and, and uh, maybe others who are watching this video to uh, take this and run with it and look at this a little more is if 
Jesus Christ's first coming, uh, his birth in Bethlehem, when God manifests in the flesh, a star appeared and then stayed over this um, uh, this area for two years. You know, is the opposite going to happen with his second return, where at the fourth trumpet we begin to see um, some supernatural events occur with the sun, moon, and stars with it becoming darker? Um, will this occur over a two-year period going the other way until that sixth seal where the sun becomes as black as, um, you know, as, as um, hair, it says, you know, and, and uh, the sun uh, becomes as blood and the stars fall from heaven. You know, is this going to be a two-year period? And, you know, I think we have some evidence that it could be with um, the beginning of um, the sun, moon, and stars and something going on with them in the heavens for all to see occurring during the time of tribulation um, at the fourth trumpet and then uh, the fifth and sixth trumpet lasting at least uh, 18 months or so uh, until um, you know Jesus Christ returns. Um, believers who have not died because of persecution um, are raptured, and then the seven vile judgments um, occur to unbelievers who have also uh, not died during this time period. Um, so again, this is speculation, but I wanted to put this together, um, you know, especially considering the last two videos. Uh, that I did about um, about prophecy um, with Jesus Christ's first return and then uh, looking at Old Testament scripture and then uh, the video just done on Jesus Christ's uh, second coming um, also looking at uh, Old Testament scripture so um, you know look at this again in times uh, study is the meat of the scripture no doubt about it um, and, uh, you know, I think that, um, you know, there's a lot of views and I'm not saying that this is necessarily correct at all. This is sort of what I'm looking at right now currently. And, um, you know, as the Holy Spirit leads me, it could, uh, he could lead me into, um, more understanding a different uh, way of looking at this as, as time gets closer, you know, I'm not going to, again, beat anybody over the head with, uh, a post tribulation tribulation viewpoint uh, if somebody has a pre-tribulation viewpoint um, you know I think they're wrong and it clearly shows uh, a post-tribulation uh, rapture um, but again I don't think it really makes that much different unless uh, you're part of that generation that it happens uh, and then if you have that pre-tribulation rapture and think you're gonna get out of here before um, all this happens um, you may be in for a shock when uh, when things really get tough. So um, again, I think the post tribulation viewpoint is correct, and um, you know believers in Jesus Christ who understand this, uh, if it does happen during our lifetimes or um, you know future um, generations, then that generation uh, will be ready for these. Um, tough times and, and tribulations, you know, uh, I think a lot of Christians look at, um, you know, the rapture and it's like, well, God's just going to take me out of here and I'm not going to go through anything. Um, and they're looking forward to this event, but, uh, you know, I, I think we can all look forward to the event definitely, um, uh, because what's on the other side is going to be so much better than, um, this world right now, as we know it for believers, uh, but that time's going to be tough, and there's a lot of people that are going to die, and a lot of people that are going to be persecuted uh, by the beast system, and you know, a lot of people aren't going to make it through. And so I don't know if we should necessarily be looking forward to this event, um, you know, on one hand or, or not, because um, if we're not prepared for it as believers, um, I think that it could 
uh, get pretty dicey. So uh, take a look at all this. And again, I want to do some more videos on end times prophecy, uh, trying to tie um, the entire book of Revelation together with the rest of uh, prophecy in the Bible. And um, God willing, we'll be doing that over the next few months. Uh, God bless, and we'll talk again soon.